it's Jennifer McGuire from Hero Arts and I have a fun summertime project for you and it's creating button necklaces. Now I'm going to show you two different kinds in this video. The first one is a button and knot necklace and it's the one that I'm shown here and I'm also going to show you how to do some embossing on them too. But first let's start with the buttons. I'm going to be using these new Hero Hues buttons. Uh, I like them because they come in a variety pack here in different colors. There's a light, medium, and dark in each shade, and they match our inks and our papers. So there are also these clear buttons. These clear ones have flowers on it, and then the matte ones are nice and flat and perfect for stamping. So I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, but you could use any buttons for this. I just happen to like these quite a bit, and I'm using the sunshine, blush, and foliage buttons here. Now for the necklace, you need some sort of string. I'm just using inexpensive string here because I'm making this necklace for one of my kids. And you can use ribbon, you can use silk string, you can use all different kinds of things. But I'm using this inexpensive string and I'm cutting a long piece. It's, it's like uh, two yards, folded in half. And on the folded end, I'm going to just tie a knot a few inches from the end. Now you could, uh, if you're into jewelry making, you could put a nice clasp on this or whatever, but I'm just tying the ends together when I put it around my neck. It's just easier that way and I have, I don't need any extra supplies for that. So now I'm going to go to the other two ends of the string. So I need two strings here. So I just folded one in half to get the two. And I'm taking one of my buttons and with one of the strings, I'm going um, up one side and out the other, as you can see here. Then I'm going to take the second string and go the opposite. So up once the other side and out the other. So you'll see I'm going in the other side. It's kind of tricky at first. And then I'll go back out the other. So you end up with a little loop on each side and an end coming out of each side on the other on the left of the button. So you'll see here the two ends. And now I'm just going to pull it all the way down to that knot that we made. Now uh, you could use um, like needles or the threading, um, beading threaders or whatever they're called to do this to make it easier. Um, however, I'm just using what I have on hand which is just the end of the rib of the string and it works out fine for me. I'll show you a trick to keep it from fraying in a moment. So this is what the buttons will look like at the end and I have it pushed up against the knot. Now I'm going to make another knot on the other side of the button as tight as I can to it. You could also put a bead here if you wanted to but I'm just doing a knot because that's what I have. So I'm just going to push this real tight here. So I have the button sandwiched between the two knots and that's not going to not going to go anywhere. So now it's time to add another button, so I'll show it again. I'll go in one side and out the other. And then I will take the other and the other string and go the opposite. Again, you could tie needles to the end of this if that makes it simpler, whatever works well for you. I like to make these with my teenage stepdaughters. We have a lot of fun making these. I, I did one that was rainbow once and I wore it to the mall and I actually got so many compliments I ended up taking it off because people kept asking me how I made it. So um, it's off. they look really impressive once you have them done. So I went in one side and out the other. So now I'm just going to pull it all the way down to the other end where the other button is. Now this type of necklace, I'm going to show you another one in a moment. This one's quicker to make um, because it, the buttons are spaced apart and also it uses less buttons. So I'm going to tie another knot close to it. Again, you could put a uh, some sort of bead here if you'd like also. So I just keep adding buttons one after another and you'll see it. You could do colored, um, colored string here or thin silk ribbon. Anything looks nice. So I wanted to show you how I stamped these buttons on here, just to add a little bit of interest. So I'm going to do white embossing on it. You could just do stays on, but I like the white uh, on the colored buttons. So I'm using this Hero Arts background stamp, and I'm inking it with Versamark ink, which is just a sticky clear ink. And I'm using these little pliers, but you could use tweezers too, just to hold the button, making sure that they're not sticking out the other side. And I'm just going to press the button flat onto the ink, you won't be able to see it there because it's a clear ink. But now I'm going to dip this into my white embossing powder. I, I like the Hero Arts white embossing powder. It's nice and crisp. Uh, but you could use any color actually here. So you'll see there's embossing powder on there. And I'm just going to zap it with a heat gun because I've got my pliers holding it. I don't have to worry about burning myself. And this will uh, melt pretty quickly. And before I touch it, I'm just going to give it a second to cool so I don't mess up the embossing. 
and you just pop it off and you have an embossed buttons and actually you could do both sides uh, these hero arts buttons are pretty flat so you could do that now here's a trick to keep the end of your string from fraying I just take a little glossy accents and rub it on the end of the string and this will keep it from fraying like I was having before uh, you could also use needles or whatever but this is a nice little trick because it's something that you might have on hand already so I just rub a little glossy accents on there and let that dry and then that'll stay nice and firm and which makes it much easier to string all these buttons onto the necklace. Now next I wanted to show you another version of a button necklace. Um, this one is fun with a mix of colors or to do a rainbow with but here I did it in all oranges and yellows. Now this version of the button necklace requires quite a few more buttons, a little more than twice the amount and also a bit more time but it also looks really nice. So now I have folded my string to have two pieces, two ends here, just like before, but I'm putting both through at once. And so I'm just going to put it through one way and pull it all the way down to the knot. So you don't have to do two strings here, but I think it's more durable that way. Uh, you could also use a thin silk ribbon too. So now I'm onto my next uh, button. I'm putting both ends through. Again, it doesn't matter which side you go in and out of but I'm going to push it down and overlap on the back side of the button I've already put there. So I just push it down as far as I can. I'll show you a few more so you can see how the overlapping pattern that you get. So now I'm grabbing another button. It, it's best if the buttons don't vary in size too much. You don't want to go from a really large button to a really tiny one because of the overlapping. So I'm just going to push this one down. It overlaps on the back of the one I just put on and you'll see a pattern starting to go here soon. So this one takes, it actually is, it goes just a little bit longer than the other one, but it does take more buttons. So I'm going to go through another one. You can see I am changing the size of the buttons up a little bit, but not too much. So we'll push this one down and you'll see it overlap the button that we just put on. And we'll just keep going back and forth with this. It's fun to do like maybe five or ten of one color and then move to five or ten of another color and keep going so that you have this kind of rainbow of color on your necklace. And you can make these either short or long. I like to wear them longer in the winter. It's fun to just grab some buttons and some string. Like if you're heading somewhere like to a baseball game and my daughters and I make these together. Just something quick and easy to do during the summertime. So here's a quick look at the final necklace. And you can see the zigzagging, the overlapping of the buttons. I hope this inspires you to try something fun with your buttons, and if you have any questions, please visit HeroArts.com.